Guys, in this video, we are going to learn how we can build our animations and transitions using Tailwind CSS in React applications. And we are going to learn this by building this simple application that you can see on the screen. It's a simple card that has been built using Tailwind CSS. So if I refresh this application, you can see that there is a little animation that is happening on this card as soon as it loads on the screen. And when we hover over it, there is another animation on it and the size of the card is increasing a little bit. Same way if we go over the text, uh, the color of the text is changing and the size of the font is increasing with the animation that has been built using Tailwind CSS. And if we go over the button, the color is again changing and there is a hover effect on this button. So we are going to see how we can build these subtle and cool animations using Tailwind CSS that makes our application very interactive when user is going to go over our application. So this tutorial is mainly focused on Tailwind CSS and we are going to learn this very step by step. So if you, even if you are a beginner in Tailwind CSS, you can still learn from this tutorial. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code and start coding this simple application. So guys, I'm here in my Visual Studio Code and we are going to start a new project basically we are going to create a new white application by running a command npm create white latest and this is going to ask us for the project name and we are going to assign a project name as animation tailwind live and the framework that we are going to be using for this project is react so we are going to select react and javascript so now our new white application has been created in this folder so i'll just access this folder and go and open my application in visual studio code and we can open a new terminal here in the Visual Studio. So here in the terminal, we are going to run this application by running a command npm install. So this is going to install all the packages that, that are going to be needed to run this application. And the next command that we have to run is npm run dev. So now our new application is running on localhost. So we can go to localhost. So here in the browser, we can see that our new application is running on localhost and we can start building this application from scratch. So before we start building this application, we are going to install Tailwind CSS in this application. So let's go to the documentation of Tailwind CSS. So I'm just going to search Tailwind CSS white react. And here under the installation, I should be able to see the instructions to install Tailwind CSS. I'm going to be leaving this link in the description. So it's easily accessible for you. So I'm just going to follow the instructions from here and install Tailwind CSS in my app. So let's run this command npm install Tailwind CSS. Let's open a new terminal here and install this into our application. So now let's go back to the documentation and install the next command that is here. And we are going to run the next command that is here, npx tailwind init. So we are going to initialize the tailwind CSS. So now after initializing the tailwind CSS, I can see that I have a tailwind.config folder in my application. And let's go back to the documentation and see what we have to do next. So here in the Tailwind config folder, we have to copy this chunk of code and put it here to configure Tailwind into this application. And the last step we have to do is we have to go to index.css and put this three commands in the index.css to import Tailwind into this white app. So I'll just find my index.css under the source directory here. I'm just going to remove all the default CSS and import Tailwind into my application. I'll also go to app.css and delete all the default CSS that is here. So now our Tailwind CSS has been configured in this app. So I'm just going to cut my terminal here and run my application again just to make sure the Tailwind is properly running in the browser. So now we can start building this application. We can go to app.jsx and first thing we can do is we can check if Tailwind is configured properly into this application. So I'll go to the browser, open my application so this is how it looks right now so i'm just going to try and apply some tailwind css on this text here just to check if my tailwind is working fine so here on the h1 tag i can say class name text is going to be 100 pixels and if we go back to the browser now we can see that the text has, size has increased which means our tailwind is working fine so all this is good and our tailwind css is working fine in this application so in the next step we are going to delete all the default code that is here in app jsx and we can also delete the default state that is here so now this application is kind of blank and we can start building this application from scratch to start building this application here i'm just going to create a folder called components under the source directory and i'm just going to create my first component here that is going to be animate card dot jsx so this is my first component in this and, and i'm just going to create a basic react component that is going to be animate card and we are going to import this animate card into app.jsx and here under the app we are going to place this card 
and all the code that we are going to be writing for this application to build the card is going to be in this component so i'm just going to say hello world for now in this card and let's see what we can see in the browser so in the browser i'm able to see hello world so that means our component is set up correctly now we can start writing all the html and tailwind css into this animate card component so here in the browser i have a sample application that we are going to treat as a reference point and try to replicate all the features that are here into our react application so let's have a look at this application and try to write the html and css to make it look very similar to this so first thing we are going to do is we are going to remove this hello world from here and this is going to be our main div tag which is like a container of the entire app so here we are going to assign a class name we can say this is going to be flex and flex column and we are going to justify all the content to center and the text is also going to be aligned in the center and let's give it a background color of black so if i save this and this is our container dev tag if i go to my application i see nothing here so what we can do is we can assign it a height so we can say min height is going to be whatever the screen size is so this container is now taking the entire space of the screen and we have assigned a background color of black to it so i'm just going to expand it a little bit so we can see the css more clearly so under this main container dev that we have built we are going to have one h2 tag and as we can see in the sample application the h2 tag is going to say tailwind css animations and this one looks like a paragraph tag so i'm just going to create a paragraph tag and copy this text from the sample application and put it here so under this main div tag we have a h2 tag we have a paragraph tag and there is also a button that says click me so let's add a button and let's call it click me so if we go back to our application now we can see basically nothing here because this text is in black color and this div tag is also having a background color of black so we are going to wrap this entire thing into one more div tag here and here on the main div tag we are going to say this is going to have a background color of white so this is going to definitely have a background color of white so if the background is white we can see the text here now this is our h2 tag this is paragraph and this is a button that says click me so we are going to try and design this main div tag with a background color of white into a card that looks like this so to do that we are going to assign it a width of let's say 200 pixels and let's assign it a height of 200 pixels let's make it actually 300 so we can see that this card is coming in the center if we look at the vertical direction but horizontally it's not in the center so here on the main container dev which is the wrapper of the entire application we already have two properties that is justify center text center i'm just going to also add one more property that is going to say items center which is going to bring this card in the center of the page and here currently we have background white we have width and the height of the card is 300 pixels and we can see that here the text is actually touching the corner so we are going to assign some padding on this card so let's say that the padding is going to be six so this is going to bring the text a little bit away from the corners of this card so if we look at the original card we can see that this is having a little bit of rounded corners here and if we look at our card this is just in a square shape right now so if we just add another property to it that is going to be rounded large so this is going to make the corners as a rounded in a rounded shape because if you look at this card this card is a little bit popping out from the background and this card is kind of merged with the background of the application so if we give it a little bit of shadow so let's give it a shadow large so this is going to pop out a little bit it's very hard to notice in the video but it's going to pop out a little bit from the background by putting a shadow to this card so another thing that is happening here on this card is that when i hover over this card the size of the card is increasing so we are going to apply the similar styling on the card here so here if i hover over it nothing is happening so i can apply a property here on the div tag that is going to say hover and on hover we are going to scale this card by 105 percent and if i do that and now if i hover over it now this is the size of the card is increasing as i hover over it but this is not happening very smoothly it suddenly increases to 105 but if i go over here this is more smoother and looks like a animation but this one is not really looking like an animation it's happening very suddenly and it doesn't look very smooth to make it smooth what we can do here is we can apply the duration to this transition that is happening on hover so this is something that we call as transitions because the size is transitioning from 100 to 105 when we hover over this card 
so here if i apply a property that transitions and we can say all transitions are going to have a duration of 500 milliseconds so what's going to happen by applying this property is it's still going to scale 205 when i hover over it but this operation is going to take 500 milliseconds so this looks more like a animation here now so i think this is uh, looking better now this is looking very similar to what's happening here so next thing we are going to do is we are going to work on this uh, h2 heading that is that says tailwind css animations we can see that this is a little bit bigger in font it's bolder and on hover the size is again going higher and the color of the text is also changing so we are going to apply all this styling on this h2 tag that is here tailwind css animations so here on h2 tag i'm just going to apply another class name and this is going to say that the text is going to be excel which means that we have increased the size of this text to excel and we can also say that the font of this text is going to be bold so this is going to make it bolder now we already know that if i want to hover over it and i want to change the styling on hover we have to apply the hover property on this h2 tag so here what i can say is on hover it's going to scale the text to again 105 so now if i hover over the card it's increasing if i hover over the text it's also increasing to 105 and on hover we also have to change the text color so i'm going to apply another hover property here which is going to say that the text color is going to be indigo and it's going to be 600 when someone hovers over this text so let's try that so if i hover over this my text color is changing now it's changing very fast it's not very smooth so to make it smoother again we are going to apply a property that is going to say transitions all and we are going to say the duration of the transition is going to be 500 so now if i do that it's going to happen very smoothly and it's going to actually look like a animation so if we look at the original app now this is looking very similar now uh, that's what is happening here and it's looking very similar to the original app now so now we can work on the paragraph tag here so on the paragraph tag i'm just going to say the text color is going to be gray and let's make it 100 uh, maybe higher let's make it 500 so this is going to be grain color and if i want to give it a margin from the top a little bit i have to say empty is going to be four so this is going to have some margin from the top so we are not going to do too much styling on the text here but we have learned how to do animations like how to make it change on hover and how to make it smoother by applying transitions so we are kind of using a combination of animation and transitions here so let's work on this button here because button looks very different if we look at the original app this is how the button looks and the button is looking very basic here so we are going to put some more styling on this button so here on the button i'm just going to apply a class name first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to give it a margin top of four and i'm also going to give it a background color which is going to be let's say indigo 700 and let's make a text color to white here so this is going to have a blue background and it's going to have a white text and we can also apply some uh, padding to it so it can have more spacing between the text and the borders so if we say that the padding x is going to be two so this is going to increase the uh, size of the button and the padding is going to be higher and if we say the padding y is going to be four this is going to make a button a little bit thicker and width of the button is going to be full so this is going to make it full size button we can change the padding and the size of the font as we want so let's give it a text of excel as well so the size of the text is a little bit higher and if you want to make this button with the rounded borders again we know how to do that we can say rounded large so this is going to make it rounded from the edges and we can also put uh, animations here like when i hover over it i want the color of the button to change so let's say that on hover the text is going to be indigo again but this time it's going to be a little bit darker so if i do that i think we are going to change not the text but the background color so i'm just going to change it to background so if we do that this is going to be a little bit darker when i hover over it and we can also scale it if we want we can do all kinds of uh, animations but again we are going to definitely make sure we apply some transitions to it so the transition is happening smoother so again we can say transitions all so basically all transitions we are going to assign a duration of 500 so if we do that the color is going to change but it's going to change very smoothly this time and we can also apply scaling to it for example if we hover over it it's going to scale a little bit let's make it 105 so this is the kind of animation that is happening here and if you look at the original button this is how it looks it's we are not scaling it here i think the scaling feature we have applied only here but so now all the animations and transitions are working on this card that we have built 
uh, I think I'm going to reduce the padding by a little bit. We are going to make it look like the original app. On the original app, we can see that the padding is much lower. So now all the animations and transitions are working on this card that we have built. So one last feature that we are going to build on this app is so if I refresh this app, this card loads immediately. This is, uh, if you look at the sample app, if I load this app, this card is just coming from the bottom to top a little bit. There's an animation going on on the first load of this application. And here in our application, there is no such animation. We have implemented all the animations on hover and a user is going to interact with it. But on the first load, we are going to build a similar kind of animation that we see here that the card is coming a little bit from the bottom to top very in a very smooth transition that is happening here. So that's the last feature that we are going to build into this application. So guys, to build this animation that is happening here on the first load, we have to understand what exactly is happening here. So if I have to explain it in words. So basically on the first load, the card is a little bit lower, but then it comes up to its original default position in 200, probably 300 milliseconds. But here, as soon as we load the application, the card is just at its sticking at its uh, default position. So to build this animation, what we are going to do here is we are going to create a state variable that is is visible and we are going to create the state variable set is visible. So basically, this is going to be like a Boolean uh, state variable and we are going to initialize this variable with a false as an initial value. And here we are going to be making use of a use effect. So this is going to have no dependency here. So as soon as the page loads, we are going to make use of a set timeout function, which is basically going to delay the execution of the code here. So as soon as the page loads, what this function is going to do is it's going to set is visible to true but it's going to take probably 300 milliseconds to do that. So what's going to happen is as soon as I load the page, my set visible initial value is going to be false, but after three milliseconds, it's going to go back to true. So that's the variable we are going to use to put the kind of animation that we have to put on this card here. So on this card now, what we can say is we can add an animation. Let me change this quotes here, which are here. So I'm just going to delete these normal quotes here. And we are going to change these quotes to make it like a string where we can inject variables. So this is how it looks uh, right now. I can probably expand it a little bit more so you can see it clearly. So we already have uh, the hover animations here, which is happening, which is good. But so here on the div tag, that is basically this card. I'm just going to add some more CSS. And here we are going to say that if my is visible is going to be true, I'm just going to add some CSS here, which is going to say that translate y to zero that is going to be its default position that is in the center of the page vertically but if my is vis visible is variable is going to be false then i'm just going to move this card basically i'm just going to translate y to minus five whenever my is variable is basically false this card is going to be five pixels lower than its default position which is in the center of the page vertically but as soon as the is visible variable is going to get true this is going to come back to its default position so now if i refresh this application we can see that this card is initially five pixels lower and then it's taking around like 300 milliseconds to come back up but if you look at our original application our original application is looking much better than what we are building here because here the card actually the opacity of the card is also changing along with the positioning of the card so here only the positioning is changing it's just going from minus five pixels to zero pixels but here if you look at it the opacity of the card is also changing very slowly so to add the similar effect into our application we can add one more property here that is going to be opacity so we are going to say that uh, if our is visible variable is true the opacity of the card is going to be 100 but if is visible is false we are going to set the opacity to zero so basically there are two operations happening here the opacity is going from zero to hundred and the position of the card is going from minus five to zero with the change of this variable and this variable is changing in 300 milliseconds which we have defined it here using a set timeout function now you can see that we see a very similar effect that is happening into our sample application here so guys that's all i wanted to cover in this video if you like this video leave a like subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one